With any locomotive restoration, you have a set of challenges. In this particular locomotive restoration, you have a unique set of challenges. This one has been started and stopped a number of times, and it's had work done that was either partially done or not done at all. And what makes that more challenging is that we cannot take anything for granted of what's been done in the past. And it does take a little bit more time just so that we can understand what has been done, what hasn't been done, and what's been done incorrectly. There was a significant amount of work that was done to it, frame and chassis assembly, but there's still a lot to do. It did have an upgrade of roller bearing engine truck, new wheels. We have noted that the valve cages are about to their maximum life as far as their bore is concerned. Likewise with the cylinders, um, that's an unknown. Uh, so we'll pull the pistons out, uh, mic the bores for taper and out around. Also inspecting the pistons, the piston rods, uh, and just the condition of the liner itself. We do have a um, couple issues here with the saddle. Uh, you can see where uh, someone has welded on some shims just from, I guess, where that was either uh, corroded or broken. Now, some of the stuff that had been done that had either been reworked um, or actually not even touched at all, uh, we really have to go through this thoroughly. So as we walk around the steam chest here to the back side, you know, a couple things that we're, we're looking at, and some of this was stuff that the railroad had, had done, um, but, you know, Things such as, you know, we've got a piece of all thread that was welded in here. We don't know if that was just butted up and welded. The old packing gland studs were on the sides so on a horizontal plane. So stuff like that we need to look at. Um, it appears that at some point these crossheads have been babbited somewhat recently. Um, we do, will need to check the alignment of the crosshead guides to the cylinder bore. Uh, so that'll be a part of the process as well brake cylinders, we'll look into those and make sure that they're packed and safe and suitable for service for many years to come. One of the key parts of this frame, and to any bar frame or any frame for that matter, on a steam locomotive is the binders. All these binders basically make up the bottom half of the frame, which make the frame more rigid. Without those, the frame could flex at this upper bar right here. So, Believe it or not, as these binders, they're fit on wedges at the bottom of the frame, which as they're pulled up tight, it, it, it pulls them up. It secures, like I said, the bottom of the frame. They're not just in there flopping around. That will also change these pedestal openings. So what we'll do is make sure that all these binders are fit properly before we take any accurate frame measurements to see what we have to tram the locomotive. All these axles have to run perpendicular to the center line of the frame, as well as parallel with one another and equally spaced. Otherwise, it's not gonna run correctly. You're gonna burn up bearings, burn up rod bearings. Um, it's just not gonna be a good day. Walking on back to the rear, the, this particular design trailing truck is, is unique in that it, it pivots from a center pin as any other two axle trailing truck for that matter. But what makes this trailing truck interesting and, and, and different is that the truck frame itself is a part of the equalization system. And what I mean by that is you have leaf springs that go over each top of every bearing box, driving box, behind the big, large driving wheels. And on the back end of the springs, in particular on this locomotive, you had drop-down hangers that came down two bars, essentially, and they connected to the front end of the truck frame. So the truck frame was actually part of the equalization system. One of the issues with that was that as this truck were to pivot as going around a curve from side to side, as that frame would move around, it would actually put a twisting moment on those hangers. So the Pennsylvania actually had um, a couple of different spring designs on the K4 locomotives. And we're gonna be investigating how we can make this better. Because one of the issues that we have learned from the past is that when this locomotive would back up through any sort of switch or turnout, is that this trailing truck uh, liked to try to climb the rail or, or try to derail. And that's because it didn't have that free motion. Another modification they did back in the 80s was the installation 
of a roller bearing behind this friction bearing or plane bearing cap, if you will, or cover, excuse me. So, you know, that's something else that we'll want to look into to make sure that they've allowed the proper amount of movement because with a, pl a plane bearing or friction bearing, some people call them, you actually have the provision for a lot more lateral movement. Whereas when you do a roller bearing conversion, the roller bearing and the roller bearing, what they call the outer race, it's fixed in place. If it starts moving, then the bearing's failing, essentially. So what we have to do is take measurements to make sure they have allowed enough lateral, free lateral, in between the box and the pedestal liners so that this wheel can actually move a little bit. Because as before, this thing per design had about three quarters of an inch of free lateral, which would also help it negotiate the curves, especially in backing up. The difference between this particular restoration and the restoration of, say, a park engine or locomotive that essentially hasn't been touched uh, since the, the steam era is that uh, with, with those locomotives, yes, you do have your wear and tear, you have your corrosion issues where it's set out for so long, but you're starting from a point where the locomotive was left off by the railroad. It was essentially untouched. Whereas with a project like this, um, where it has been touched and it's actually passed through several hands, uh, it does make it a challenge because uh, some of the materials that were used, uh, and particularly on the boiler, uh, were found to be suspect uh, in our investigations. So, you know, we have to identify all those uh, uh, pieces and parts that were either um, perhaps even installed incorrectly or uh, the improper materials being used uh, and that does make it more of a challenge because you have to go back and literally investigate everything that was done uh, in the past so that we have a remediation plan uh, so that we can take action and, and uh, make all that stuff correct.